you know, once we had the union and stuff, and I worked as, as a shop steward for a long time, did a lot of grievances, and I learned a lot, and it was fun. Now we had one example was this, this is was, to me, this was hilarious. I am so enjoyed it. We had this guy who was an old RAF sergeant, and he was a very competent janitor. He could fix things on his own, and he did it at low cost, you see. And he would be in the maintenance supervisor. And he was a tough old guy, being RAF, and he was used to a strict regimen where he had to get things right. In the sort of new dispensation, once we had a union, the boss brought in a, she had a youngster, young enough to be his granddaughter, who had a really foul temper and who not, knew nothing about maintenance, made her maintenance supervisor and she proceeded to give him a hard time and bully him. She thought of him as a sort of failure and as a non-entity. She just saw this old guy doing janitorial work. And then there's this tradition in the RAF, I believe, is if you have an issue with somebody, you can quietly meet them privately in their office or something, your commanding officer. You get your caps off and you have a free and frank discussion. Well, he was thinking that. He decided he goes into her office and remember, She's young enough to be his granddaughter. He can't, and she knows nothing about maintenance. He's just finding her frustrating. So he goes in there one day, afternoon, and he's like a real sergeant. He gives her a bit of a going over, you know, like a proper sergeant. And he piles into her, you know. You know, he's not scared of her at all. He just sorts her out, whack, 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 whack. She's not doing her job properly. And that offended him. She's not doing her, say, maintenance supervising job properly. And this is what she's got all wrong, and she's wasting the school's money. Well, she put him on a kind of disciplinary chart. Now, meanwhile, she'd been so rude to all of our teachers, she'd been a real bully, that someone suggested we keep a book on her, you know. So every incident that happened, we recorded. So we had these, this record of incidents. And I had this little book, and it had a lot of incidents. And we wrote them out in some detail. I said, look, it'll come a time where we can raise this. It'll be useful. So now he's up on insubordination, which was absurd. The world was upside down. Right. This youngster doesn't know anything. Who should be his subordinate is giving him a hard time. And when he re tries to reorganize the balance the way it should be, he's up on this disciplinary chart. So we have a hearing. So I said, listen, you're not allowed to speak. And I'm, we'll agree that I do all the talking. So you can't incriminate yourself. And what we do is we'll just put them on the defensive. And so we go and we admit nothing, you know, there's going to be no admissions made about anything. And we just want to hear their side of the story. So we hear what she has to say, her account of the, of the incident. And then I go and, we, well, we got a caucus, so I've got to discuss this. So we went outside, he smoked a couple of cigarettes, we shot the breeze for like 20 minutes, half an hour. And we knew they wanted to get home anyway, so we put them under pressure. And then come back in and I said, look, we have a lot of problems with your witness because she's no she's a noted bully and then we pull out this now in a strict hearing this would have been irrelevant it would have been hot we might have got it in under the thing called similar fact evidence but even that's doubtful but they had no experience of that stuff and we just started reading out on such and such a date at about this time you did such and such to mrs so and so and you called her so and so and so and, so, and she will say that and we read out a few of these well the contract manager was starting to tear her hair out and got really, really nervous. It was so we shut the meeting down, we didn't hear another thing. And that was the end of it, you know. And then I think she'd realized she'd met the significant opposition, so she moved on to some other job. But where that, that you, was where did you develop this skill? Uh, you know, we're just watching Ken Holmes at work. He was a great and talking to people and you know so that's why I got interested in law after we did after did all these grievances. I did collective bargaining with him and God he was wonderful. And you know, you think he'd taught himself everything. And he was negotiating with lawyers who were making a fortune. You know, people who had been trained as lawyers. And he could take them on. And you know, seeing him take them on made me realise that perhaps the legal profession isn't that mysterious, you know. And it's just a lot of hoops you put people through. And I wonder about that in education. Do we set up structures just to control a profession, to corner a market? Or do we try and liberate people through education where they acquire a discipline, acquire a skill that they can use, you know, acquire a whole way of thinking that becomes part of them? And uh, 
you know, it seems to me there's that tension between genuine education and then, you know, controlling the market perhaps, you know, and watching him was great.